Hey, good afternoon, everybody. So um, I'd like to go ahead and let you know that we'll have Dr. Gallion and Chair McKinney here uh, to take your questions. Dr. Gallion will deliver some introductory remarks, as will Chair McKinney. At the end of the remarks, Dr. Gallion will take questions from each reporter. Um, he'll likely go around the room and take one question at a time um, and let you know. So, so I hope you enjoy your time with us, and, and we're grateful that you came today. Thanks so much. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Gallion, Deputy Superintendent Huggins, and Ms. McKinney. Are there any other trustees? Okay. So we're starting on time. The school bell has not rung, but we are being timely. We welcome each of you here to 75 Calhoun this afternoon. We thank you for making the effort. Uh, other trustees would have joined us as well, but they are fulfilling their professional obligations and are out in our community working today. We look forward to a joint effort with you, the media, to make our students and their education our priority today and every day. In just a minute, you will meet Dr. Gallion and learn from him what the board and members of our community learned and heard him say back in May. He said, I am ready for a challenge. I am willing to collaborate and I am committed to building a legacy. As a Marine, Dr. Gallion prepared and started work on day one. As an educator, Dr. Gallion has filled many roles to affect students. He has been a classroom volunteer, a teacher, an assistant principal, a principal, an assistant superintendent, a superintendent, a director of schools. Um, he himself, as a student, has earned two master's degrees, one in curriculum and instruction, the other in educational leadership, and that is the focus of his doctorate as well. The board completely and wholeheartedly looks forward to working with Dr. Gallion for the very best education for every student in every classroom in every school. Dr. Gallion, please. Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon. <clears throat> so I want to thank you all for joining uh, me today. As I stand before you as the newly appointed superintendent of schools for Charleston County School District. I am thrilled for this opportunity and have the opportunity to address you today on this momentous moment. First and foremost, I want to assure you and emphasize my unwavering commitment to the achievement of every single one of our students. It is my firm belief that every child, regardless of their background or circumstance, deserves an equal opportunity to succeed and thrive in our school district. As superintendent, I will work tirelessly to provide this necessary the necessary resources, support, and guidance to help each student reach their fullest potential. Now, many of you may be wondering why did I choose Charleston as a, for this position? Why did I choose to come here? The answer is very simple. Charleston has a rich history and a vibrant community that values education, a value that sometimes have passionate views in a community like Charleston. One of my strengths as a leader is to bring communities together. This is why I was drawn to the strong sense of community and the shared commitment to providing exceptional educational opportunities for every student. I am excited to join this team. 
in the interest of demonstrating my full commitment to transparency and building my relationships with the community and the media, I would like to start today by doing so. I want to take a moment to share a very deeply personal situation um, that I've gone through as a journey. I know this came up several times in the media over the last few weeks, so I just want to make sure I clearly address what that was. Four years ago, I was diagnosed with kidney cancer. It was a challenging and life-changing experience, but I am grateful that I am now in remission. Throughout this journey, I learned the true value of resilience, determination, and the power of a supportive community. The experience, this experience left me with deeply, being deeply grateful for the unwavering support I received from my loved ones, colleagues, and the community, as long, along with the medical professionals that helped me through this journey. During that journey, I also had two knee replacements over the last four years. While they were um, a blow to my love for running and cycling, I was able to endure it and come out of it with more empathy, compassion, and the understanding that everyone faces their own battles in life. I plan to continue to bring that lens to the work here at CCSD, making sure that I'm using that lens to work with families, students, and the community. Now, my personal journey has been a blessing. It is deep in my commitment to ensuring that every student, regardless of their, a, their personal circumstance, receive the support and opportunity and the success access they need to succeed. I understand firsthand that a transformative, the transformative power of an education, having gone through my own journey. As superintendent, I strive to create an inclusive, nurturing environment. I firmly believe that by fostering a supportive community with a focus on students, we can empower our students to become and overcome any obstacle they may face and achieve their dreams. In closing, I want to express my gratitude for the opportunity to serve as your superintendent of schools, and I am excited and humbled to work alongside each and every one of you so we can work toward a brighter future in CCSD. Thank you. Questions? Well, what I'm going to do the first 100 days is make sure I listen and learn and find out where the opportunities may exist, but I have no prescribed new program that I'm bringing to the district. Thank you. And Dr. Galleon, uh, Ray Green of Life Life News. Um, basically, um, there's no secret that your uh, contract uh, and your search uh, as you were brought on was, and it was a little bit controversial with two superintendents dropping out before you were selected, what do you have to say to address those concerns that you were elected uh, and selected because you were the only one that kind of So it's no secret that there was some controversy around the search itself, but I am committed to this community, learning from what um, was going on in this community and building those relationships as we move forward. Talk to me about, you know, there's a number of different issues that uh, the Charleston County School District is dealing with. Um, what are maybe the top two or three things that you, you see that you would like to address immediately that you think you can have some positive uh, impact on? Well, I haven't identified those yet. In my first 100 days, I plan to listen and learn from the community as we go out and 
find out what the challenges may be. And so as I identify them, tune in for our presentation after 100 days. Well, the market drives that, and so the, 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 the offer was based on market value of the other superintendents in the area. Um, in your 100-day plan, you list a couple goals. Can you expand on this idea of uh, a culture of public accountability for student outcomes to those achievement gaps? Can you repeat that question, um, please? Well, one of the things I, I try to do is work with staff and listen and learn from them and, and figure out how we're going to support them in their work in order to drive achievement. So we'll try to do it together. It's a team effort. because I don't know where they came from specifically. So they, I just know they're from the area, and I still have family here that live in various areas in the, in the um, actual county. So some live on Johns Island, some live out in Somerville, some live in North Charleston. So we were rekindling and re-engaging re with one another. But my grandmother, which is really from the South, she migrated in the 40s. So many of her siblings are passed on. Uh, you mentioned actually a follow-up on this question um, that some of your priorities include analyzing patterns in data, addressing social emotional learning, building bridges with the community. None of this is new per se. What are you bringing to this that's new, specifically what are you bringing to this that's new uh, and different from what we've seen? Uh, One of my strengths, uh, as I mentioned in uh, my opening remarks, is, is to build relationships. And in building those relationships, I listen and learn from other people, and we begin to dig into the work by analyzing the data. So I'm looking forward to that opportunity. What's going to be new about that? You've been here for years. Mm -hmm. What's going to be different in your administration? My unique spirit, my unique personality. Well, one of the things, so I've worked in two different districts, one much larger than Charleston and one quite smaller than Charleston. As a superintendent, as you get to a certain amount of students that you oversee and staff that you oversee, it's really about scalability at that point. So my experience in, as a teacher has always been at the heart of the work, which is to make sure students are learning in the most creative and engaging ways I possibly can. So as I support teachers in their work and support administrators on how to work with their teachers, one of those things I keep in mind is the ultimate goal is to create a unique experience for students in the classroom. I look forward to meeting those, some of those parents, and, and my first 100 days, I'm planning to bridge those um, gaps there and build the relationships necessary so that people can understand who I am and what I do bring to the table. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think you may have received a couple of these questions when you did your visit, but uh, during the election, one of the big issues was uh, centered around the idea of critical race theory. Granted, the actual theory isn't taught in schools, I understand, but some of those tenets. But we went back and we looked at your dissertation, which seemed to carry some of those same ideas, talking about injecting social justice into uh, curriculums, as well as uh, um, some of the specific challenges that especially black young men face. Can you talk a little bit about how critical race theory fits into your approach to uh, education 
and whether or not that has a place here in Toronto City. Well, critical race theory does not fit into my approach. I do not advocate for critical race theory, nor do I think it has a place in K-12 education. One of the things I want to do in my first 100 days is to meet with leaders from that community, some of those parents, and begin to understand what the challenges are, and then work with the team inside the district to figure out how are we better supporting those parents, what are the actual challenges that we see in the classroom, and how can we modify that and support. Thank you. Um, Dr. Gallagher, I also have a chance to cover your neighbors in the North Dorchester District too, mm -hmm. they have about a third of CCSD's budget, yet they continue to have like higher test scores than CCSD. How can you turn CCSD's overwhelming three times budget compared to Dorchester District 2 to your north, and how can you put that budget to better use to uh, improve those test scores? Well, one of the things we're gonna be doing in the first 100 days is really analyzing the data including making sure that we do audits on all of the departments and figuring out how are we using our resources to better get better performance out of students. I just thought about another question. I know Mayor Sony had mentioned um, that there was a lack of communication between the superintendent and, and himself. Um, he said it was like over a year or more from the last time he heard from a previous superintendent. Obviously, that's not you. What would you be doing to try to make sure that lines of communications are stronger in the future? Well, one of the things I and I, I can um, the team can attest to this first day of hitting the ground. One of the first things I did is wanted to walk the campus and meet people. I'm big on relationships and big on partnerships. I understand when you work with elected officials, you can they can learn about you, what your desires and needs are, and then you can learn from them as well. I would dis, um, disagree with that because I feel that I have the same skills that it would take to run a large district as it did to take to run a 16,000 student district. Well, I want to first get an opportunity to engage with staff and the community to really understand what those gaps are and look at the data to make sure we address it in appropriate ways. What sort of ideas do you have um, on teacher retention and um, supporting educators? I absolutely want to um, support teacher retention and I'm glad to see that the board saw it fit to, to accommodate them and give them the raise that they deserve. And so I'm really happy about that. And as we move forward, I want to continue to work with those teachers and figure out other ways that we can work with them to stay and be, and be engaged in the work. Dr. Gellin, your answer to just about every question has been, we'll see. Can you give us, how much you come to this school district, because you have a vast amount of experience, with some ideas about what you might want to do here? Can you be specific about some things that you wanted to do here? Because we really haven't heard anything. Well, I want to address the achievement gap. That's one of my main priorities. But it, to sit here and say what that is and how I'll go about doing it would be premature. But you must have some tools in your toolbox. What do you think you might well, I do. I do. I, I do have a vast array of knowledge in those areas, and I plan to use those to assess what we have going on in the district.
can you uh, tell us, are you going to have another press conference like this in a hun after the 100 days is over to, um, to kind of give us that plan? Really? Yes. What <laughs> <laughs> uh, will success look, for, look like for you in, uh, I don't know, take your time period, 100 days or a year from now? What will success look like? Well, success in 100 days will be able to come out with a, a detailed report about what I learned. So that would be one benchmark of success. And then how we can move forward in developing a plan to address some of the things that came out of the 100-day assessment. One last question. Am I good? Am I good? Yeah. OK. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Welcome. Good to see you too. Good to see you slip in. It's so nice. I saw George and I thought, yeah. I thought you were going to see him. Yeah. You know I was going to sleep you up before me. I tell you. Very well done. Very well done. Very well done.